This is the first of two videos going over practice problems from section 5.2 on infinite series. So for the problems in this video, we're going to practice looking at sequences of partial sums. So when we talk about the sequence of partial sums, what we mean is that these individual terms of the series are the individual terms that we've been talking about when we talked about sequences. So we call that A1, A2, A3, and so on, A4. So those are the numbers that we're actually adding. But then the sums, the partial sums, that's what we actually get when we start doing the adding. So S1 here, that's just A1, but S2 is A1 plus A2, and S3, that's A1 plus A2 plus A3, and so on. A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, that's S4, and S5 is A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5. So the idea here is that what we'd like to ultimately do is try to understand whether or not a series, an infinite series like this, has a sum. But we can't add an infinite number of numbers together. That would literally take forever. And so instead what we do is we do these partial sums and try to understand where do these partial sums go. So in this case, a1 is just 1. a1 plus a2, that's 1 plus 1 tenth, so that'll be 1.1. a1 plus a2 plus a3, that's going to be 1.11. Then we get 1.111 and then 1.1111. And ultimately, what we're going to talk about in the next video is trying to see when we can find patterns in these partial sums. But for this problem, all we're being asked to do is to actually find the first five terms of the sequence of partial sums, and we've done that. Next up, we've got a series here where we have a formula, but the same idea applies. It might help to start writing out the first few terms of this series. Since n starts at 1 and my formula is n squared, my first term is 1 squared. Then I've got 2 squared. 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, and so on. The series goes on forever. We only really need to care about the first five terms here. So S1, that'll just be the first term, which is 1. S2, that'll be the sum of the first two terms. That's 1 plus 4, which is 5. S3, that'll be 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is 14. S4, that's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16. That'll be 30. And then finally, S5, that'll be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 5 squared is 25, which will be 55. And that's it. Next up here, we don't have a formula, but we do have the first five terms written out, so we can just go ahead and add those together. So S1, again, that'll just be the first term. 1 divided by 2 times 3, that's going to be 1 sixth. S2, another way to think about this is that it's the previous sum plus the next term. So that's S1 plus 1 twelfth, or in other words, 1 sixth plus 1 twelfth. That works out to be 3 twelfths or 1 fourth. We keep going in this way. S3 is going to be S2 plus the next term, S2 plus 1 20th, and that's going to work out to be 3 tenths when you simplify that down. S4, that'll be S3 plus the next term, which is 1 30th. 5 times 6 is 30. That's going to work out to be 1 third when you simplify that all down. And then finally, S5 is going to be S4 plus the next term. That's 1 divided by 6 times 7. That's 42. And so when we add 1 third plus 1 over 42, we end up with 5 over 14. Again, when you simplify that and reduce it down. So these are our first five partial sums. All right, next up, we've got this pattern. So again, remember that this minus 1 to the n plus 1, really that, all that's doing is creating an alternating sign. We're starting at n equals 1, which means we're going to be starting with negative 1 squared, which is positive. So this will be 1 divided by 2 to the first power, minus 1 divided by 2 squared, plus 1 divided by 2 to the third power, minus 1 divided by 2 to the fourth power, plus 1 25th, minus, and so on. So our first partial sum is going to just be that first term, 1 half. S2 will be the sum of the first two terms. So the first term is 1 half, the second term is negative 1 fourth and 1 half minus 1 fourth is 1 fourth. S3 will be 1 half minus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. That works out to be 3 eighths. Again, find a common denominator, simplify that down. S4, that will be my S3 plus the next term, so that'll be minus 1 16th, or plus negative 1 16th if you prefer to think about it that way. That'll work out to be 5 sixteenths. And finally, S5, that'll be S4 plus the next term, the S4 is 1 over, that's not right, it shouldn't be 25, it should be 32, sorry about that. 2 to the 5th, I was thinking 5 squared in my head, so 2 to the 5th is 32. So this will be S4 plus 1 over 32, 
which is 11 over 32. So here are our partial sums there. So for this last one, again, we have a formula. This time our formula involves square roots, but we do it the same way. So our first term is one divided by the square root of one, plus one divided by the square root of two, and so on. Now, because these square roots are not gonna give us nice uh, number formatted numbers, we're just gonna write everything in terms of a decimal here. Because again, we're just practicing getting our partial sums uh, constructed. So S1 here is just gonna be my first term, one divided by the square root of one, but that's just one. S2, that's gonna be my previous sum plus my next term, one plus one divided by the square root of two, that's approximately 1.7071. I'll just round to four decimal places here. S3, that'll be my previous term, S2, plus one divided by the square root of three, that'll be approximately 2.2845. S4, that's S3, plus my next term is one divided by the square root of four, that's just one half, so that'll be my previous sum plus one half, so 2.7845. And then finally, S5, that'll be S4 plus my next term, 1 over the square root of 5, which will be approximately 3.2317. So not a lot going on with these problems, but it's important to, re to remember as we build more tools to deal with series that ultimately what we're really doing is understanding each of these partial sums and trying to get a sense of where do these partial sums go in the long term. And we'll start talking more about that in the next video.